I've had back surgery. I had back surgery when I was a young resident in orthopedic surgery, and my back has been a problem ever since because of the surgery. And, and it's something that I wish I could have turned back. I wish I would have had a spinal decompressor back then that would have worked. I didn't. And so now I'm paying for it for the rest of my life. Seek medical attention for back injuries, knee injuries, and more. They seek the counsel of Dr. Timothy Kremchak. Regarded as one of the top orthopedic surgeons in sports medicine, Dr. Kremchak is the medical director and chief orthopedic physician for Cincinnati's professional baseball franchise and works with other sports franchises ranging from minor league baseball to soccer. Dr. Kremchak knows firsthand the risks back surgery presents. Now a staunch advocate for disc force and spinal decompression therapy, Dr. Kremchak suggests exhausting every alternative possible before opting for back surgery. Back surgery, the risks are enormous. Things that go on and, and potentially can go wrong with back surgery are enormous and, and they're lifelong. So anything that you can do non-operatively has got to be your, your, your first choice, second choice, and, and, and again, multiple choices after that. Spinal decompression takes the disc from protruding and brings it back into its normal position and takes the pressure off the spinal cord and the nerve roots therefore it takes a lot of the pressure and the spasm off of the musculature in the lower back, increases the range of motion, decreases the pain, and hence increases your function to do whatever you want to do. If I have a patient that comes in, I don't care who they are, and they've got back pain or neck pain, before I would ever recommend that they had a, a, a surgery, a surgical procedure, an invasive procedure, even an epidural, an injection, I would recommend the disc force because there's no downside to trying this and it works. Barry Larkin, the longtime shortstop of the Cincinnati Reds, turned to spinal decompression as an alternative to possible career-ending surgery. My cervical C5, C6, I had some, de er, some degenerative disc issues, so the disc have a certain amount of space between the two. My space was very limited, and it, the disc material that's between the two vertebrae, it leaked onto my nerve. I was almost completely uh, paralyzed. So. I go in, have surgery, and then the, the doctor says to me, okay, fine, now you're good for right now, but there's gonna to have to be some, some aftercare. So you're gonna to have to do something. You can have surgery yet again. The second surgery will be to fuse the, the vertebrae together. With the fusion, they said you probably lose your, the mobility in your neck, and you know I don't know if you'll be able to play shortstop anymore. And, or you can do something called decompression therapy. After consulting with Dr. Kremchak, Barry decided spinal decompression therapy would be the best and most effective treatment. Physically, I could really feel a difference. I didn't have the spasming, the tightness. Uh, I used to have to sleep sitting up. I could lay down, I could lift my kids with no problem. I went back to spring training the next year and uh, saw the doctor and the staff and they couldn't believe uh, what shape my neck was in. And uh, I played another four years. I had another great four years. I chose not to have the surgery. I'm walking billboard saying that decompression therapy works. Chronic back pain is an epidemic that's sweeping America. It's actually the number one cause of disability. It's estimated that over 40 million Americans, one out of three people, suffer chronic neck or back pain. The spine is a uniquely simple yet complex mechanism. In between each one of these vertebrae is a disc, which is made of nucleus pulposus and annulus fibrosus, but let's say fluid to make it simple. And as we're younger, these discs actually have more water content. The more water content, the more flexible. As we age, though, from constant compression from these vertebrae moving up and down repeatedly, the fluid starts to diminish. As the fluid gets displaced, what happens is we develop areas what we call herniations. Herniations can then rupture. A rupture then would put a trap to the nerve. The result, terrible pain. Sometimes you could have pain, back pain, neck pain, pain down your leg, pain down your arm. What we try to do with decompression is actually open up the vertebrae and allow that fluid to seep back in, which relieves the pain naturally, gently, effectively, not surgically. What decompression therapy can do, it's a gentle way of opening up a segment. Years ago, they would put a person maybe in a the hospital, they would put traction on them, hang these weights at the end of the leg, and the nurse might come by every hour, how are you feeling? Now, through technology, through computers, actually, 
by the patient. We can actually target which vertebrae, which specific vertebrae, and by doing that, what you can do is create a gentle, non-invasive approach to pain relief.